So are you Shoko Fande and not Shoko? Why? Um, about 35 years ago, uh, I was planning to write a book. This book ended up with a script. And the script uh, was called Seven Servants. It was my first feature film. In that film, it was a huge discussion that a person calls himself what he wants. And that person did not have a name in the movie. And Anthony Quinn asks this person, what, how do I call you if you don't have a name? How do I call you? He said, well, I haven't found one I like yet. I haven't found it yet. Shokufande was my name when I was born with it. And I had no uh, recognition, I, I had no, no affinity or anything against it. I just didn't know what it meant. And I ended up in the, I ended up uh, as a young boy in, in Los Angeles with a name called like Shokufande and nobody knows what this is all about, where this guy comes from. In America, you're either Rick, John, Mike, or something like that. I had to adopt and adapt to the society's rules at that time. So uh, I tried to change names that I was comfortable with. And I was comfortable with Shokov for a while. And then I ended up uh, uh, recognizing that uh, what I am comfortable with might just be not as comfortable for many other people who would not match me with that name. Anybody would hear Shokov is that a Russian and I don't look Russian or not ordinary Russian. Mm -hmm. So I had to always again explain to everybody that I am not a Russian. And that was exactly what I had to go through when I was in the States. I was trying to tell them it's just an Iranian name. Anyway, at the end of the day, make it all short, about a year ago or so, I and everybody else, we all decided that I am Shokufande and Shokufande is also a funny name. It could be Chocolate, Shokufane, Shokufani, Shokufande, something I'm comfortable with now. And that's how I was born. Th this is my name. This is the name I was born with. So it's your real name and you feel comfortable with it as well. Finally, right before I die. So okay. I will die as a Shokufande. Okay, but do you like Shokuf more than Shokufande or not? No, anymore? not really. I, I think right now, when I come to it, I would like to be called Tree or I... <laughs> No or a table. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I don't really care or okay. hey, but uh, I think it's one of the complications right. on the face of this planet. The names. It's really nobody thinks of. Why do we all have to have names? I knew uh, a brilliant girl uh, that told me one day why numbers end at nine as one number. And I never came to it. That, that girl sits right in front of me right now. <laughs> and that's exactly what I, I still think about. Why do we all Why have to have people names? People have names, yeah. yeah. I know your works, arts, movies, scripts, and uh, now you have musics. Uh, how did you came to that? Also very professional music. How did it happen? Uh, when I was four or five, I used to sing under the shower, in the bathroom. And my father used to say, that, that boy can sing. He just has to learn how to do it. Believe it or not, they even thought maybe to give me uh, singing lessons when I was about five or six or seven, that, that, that young. And uh, somehow, somebody, somewhere, thought that uh, the quality of the voice was okay, mm -hmm. but the guy cannot sing. And cut. Next shot, I was in Los Angeles. And uh, completely different life, different music, different people, different styles, different melodies. And I adjusted to, to the melodies of the time in Los Angeles. And uh, somehow, I, I never stopped singing to myself. I always sang. I, I was always singing all my life until one day uh, some guy came to me and said, Irish, 
there is a producer, a very successful producer who works with Americans. You are American, you have this American accent, and somehow your voice, should we go meet him? And I said, who is this guy? What, what do you mean? At the time, I did not even know what rap was, but he already started with this, this, this producer, had already started with a rapper in Where? Germany. His name was Gunther Würfel. Oh, really? And this is the guy I ended up with, going to, uh, uh, for premiering a lot of things. And I'm thankful to him because of, of really some things that I never thought I'd be able to do. Number one was uh, music. He took some examples, samples, and uh, recordings with another friend also, some other friends as well. And uh, we followed up. And also he's the guy who convinced me uh, not even Anthony Quinn could convince me to go in front of the camera. I hated to be in front of the camera. I just never wanted to be in front of the camera. And Quinn, in the, in the midst of the shooting of the film, one day said, Darish, you know what? We don't have faces like that. You're crazy if you don't go in front of the camera. You don't know how much time you're losing by not going in front of the camera because as a director, you would probably lose a whole year to do one film. Mm -hmm. But with that face, you would be shooting 10 to 15 films a year, and you would be so famous. You're crazy if you don't play the next film with me and don't play the role of Lenin. Oh, he was going to play Gurky uh, for another friend. And anyway, make that short. Many years after that, I shot my first film Again, with Gunther Warfel, without even wanting it or knowing it. And at the end of the day, I have to say, the film is called, I don't know, My Ego and I or something like that. It, it, it was an incredible uh, surprise, positive surprise for me. Not because uh, that I'm still a terrible actor in that movie, but it comes across as someone who, uh, contrary to what you think, could be, uh, could be acceptable by a camera. And exactly the same, I would say, uh, that voice, music. exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I hated my voice. I still, I don't like my voice. But I think, uh, gradually, I grew into it. And something came out of it. You were and, called, maybe, for that. <laughs> well, I learned, I learned. Okay. I learned. I, and I learned, and I thank... Uh, uh, Gunther, that he took it very seriously. I mean, he's a professional man and he took it professionally. And I had to adjust to the professionalism of uh, recording a song and singing a song and all of that. And then, yeah, one thing leads to another. Yeah, uh, that's right, true. Because uh, your last song, Don't Go to the War, is a very professional song. And I would like that you explain us about it. Yeah. How did it yeah. happen? And then, uh, finally, it yeah. came to don't go to the yeah. war. Uh, we'd had uh, 11, 12 songs with uh, Gunther. That we'd had different, different styles, different from R&B to house, or whatever, that he, he was mixing things up. And all of a sudden, I was sitting in, uh, in Berlin with a friend, uh, an artist as well. He listened to the music that we had just finished with Gunther. I had just brought it and I just played it. It was a studio where I was with him in the studio in Berlin. And he was just saying, Dyrish, uh, I mean, you can, you can write lyrics, you can write things. Why don't you sing something about war? And I said, I, I, don't, I, I don't see a war now. Maybe I feel one, but I don't see one. It what, was what, last year? It was, no, two and a half years ago. Wow, all right. It was two and a half years ago. I said, I, I feel, I feel something is going to happen, but I just don't know where and when and how. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, he said, well, you know, you don't have to be so uh, serious about it because you're an artist anyway. You mix things up. Why don't you just mix things at, at a lyric and write something about a war theme? And I said, okay, I, I, what, what do you mean? You know, not, not like pointing a finger and telling everybody, in fact, in the video, I do point the film, but I, it, it starts with a little dog, and I was talking to my dog, 
So I have two dogs in Paris. I said, yeah, maybe I could talk to my dogs, not to the people. I could tell them not to do this, not to do that, or do everything he wants, but don't go to the war. And it became uh, the, the main theme of this uh, song. And, and it's a good song. And it's really something that I'm, uh, I'm proud that I have done it. Great. That, that do I you have, have any project uh, for the future, any project? music projects? Yes, I do have a project in my mind regarding music, music speaking, exactly. but uh, that's what we're talking about right now. Uh, uh, that project, uh, I would love to contribute a, uh, a song to a positivity of a movement uh, in uh, my homeland and my fellow Iranians. And I hope that this song would be finished pretty soon if we could bring it out. Uh, I, I am very thoughtful about it, and I, I hope that it would be done uh, equally as well with uh, That would be pro fantastic at this time. Gunther Wolf, yeah, right. That times is really... pretty amazing. Regarding the global time, yeah, the war that we got yeah. into. Mm -hmm. I mean, not we, but we are all experiencing this uh, global situation. And I, I truly hope that each one of us would have some sort of uh, moments of uh, reasonable uh, uh, thoughts to, to unjustify, to, to do whatever we can, uh, cliche, kitsch, or whatever you want to call it, to at least do something to get out of this war, war drums that are right now uh, uh, playing all over the planet, all over the globe, and specifically also freedom in, in Iran. That would be something that I'm very, very attached to. Yeah, that would be really good if you do that. And so my last question, would you please tell us uh, which kind of your artwork do you really like more to work in a uh, philosophy field or movies or writing, music? Wow. What is your favorite? That's an amazing question. Area. I think the best thing that I love or I, I am really uh, uh, completely, completely uh, uh, comfortable with on this planet is when I sleep and when I wake up. And when I wake up, some power, some energy tells me, this day you are going to do this thing. And I never think what that is. I always wake up with something from, believe me, it's some, no, I am not in it. Somebody tells me, today you're going to write a song, or today you're going to be nice to the, to, to the, to the cats or to the dogs, or, you know, right. you know uh, or enjoy a beautiful smile or something like that. And that's how it happens. What happens, I, 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 am feel, I feel comfortable with it because I don't plan it. I do not plan any of this. It's something that my life so you is You live always... in the moment, exactly. for the moment, exactly. and you get just inspired exactly. by everything that surrounds you. Exactly. Okay. The moments push me forward to do what I do. I have never planned anything. I thought there was one huge sentence that I learned. I think it was a German who told me that. Whenever you plan something, God is laughing. For me, it's a her for him was a him, he's laughing himself to death because he it's plans like he everything you. <laughs> not you. Or I think she plans everything, not me. I'm, I'm blessed to have been on this planet. I'm blessed to have been uh, surrounded by so much uh, positive uh, or creativity. And, and I hope that I have the same energy on, until the last day that I live. So we hope so. <laughs> Thank you so much. Same for you. Thank you Thank too. Thank you.